about that. Welcome to the show, John. Pleasure Thank you. having you here, Tony. Great <laughs> having you. you here, both of you. Um, Tony, let's yeah. start with you. Mm -hmm. Tell us, um, tell us about your role specifically, about yourself, mm -hmm. um, and your role in this initiative. Right, myself, myself, twenty-eight years old. Okay. Yes, I have to tell. <laughs> young, ugly thing. Uh, <laughs> it's fruits and water, mm -hmm. um, and um, Wazimba is basically Wazimba stands for extraordinary. So right. it's the Kenya Wazimba Youth Foundation. It can be translated into the Kenya Extraordinary Youth Foundation, and the organization is all about living the dream that you've always had. Okay. And, and everybody has different levels of dreams, but then uh, there's always the shared vision of trying to accomplish what you've always accomplished in life. Right. And what makes that possible by getting people to become more responsible in their life. Um, it's, it's, it's always been in my heart as, as, as I grew up to be able to do what I've always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Being able to see other young people do it was what I always wanted to do. Okay. It was, I mean, it was natural for us to start a youth fund with my partner, Jerome, and is about uh, bringing leadership back home. I think leadership is only a government issue. I think leadership is a personal issue. Okay. And if you can run yourself, then you can run anything. And that's what Wazimba is about. John, to you. Um, what is your role in Wazimba? Um, and specifically, how did you and Tony um, partner up? Well, I think it all began um, with a phone call. Mm -hmm. um, these young people called upon me. Uh, I'm not 28. <laughs> as a a bridge between them and their particular generation. And I think um, maybe in this country we have a sort of disconnect between the wazes and the youth. We're always right. being told that 60% of our population is under 17. Right. But we don't do a great deal for them. So uh, before they sort of discover the awful truth that I'm a, a lion thief, which <laughs> I'll find out in, in due course, <laughs> <laughs> they phoned me to be a bridge between them and the Waze so that I could sort of go to a lot of my friends whom I know personally mm -hmm. as a sort of front. I, I've spent 30, close to 30 years of my life as a, as a high school classroom teacher. Right. So my relationship is with young people. Okay. I present a, a TV show where I quiz university students. Yes. Uh, other channels, sadly, mm -hmm. uh, but yes. my relationship with the young is long-standing. Mm -hmm. So I felt uh, extremely privileged. I mean, it's only the youngsters for, at this stage in my life who've actually called upon me to be a front person for them. Okay. So all I have to do is um, speak on their behalf with a great deal of sincerity. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that you have to know is that part of their, if we've only got so many minutes, is that these young people are going to set off in a couple of weeks' time, and they're going to go through 12 African countries right starting with Kenya mm -hmm. the trouble spots that we had in December January Naivasha Nyahururu all these places which flared up right. and people sort of chopped each other to pieces mm -hmm. and the young people are going to make a direct connection with those young people they're then going to go to Uganda Tanzania uh, all the uh, well, miss we'll out Zimbabwe perhaps because that's a security risk at this time right but they're going to start off here and end up in South Africa and come right the way back. It's a loop. And uh, mm -hmm. in this loop, when they get to the end of the loop, mm -hmm. they're going to meet Desmond Tutu. And we're trying, uh, Uncle John is going to make a few phone calls and be with the blessing of somebody who's very big and a celebrity in Kenyan society. Okay. So it's a big initiative and I think they, I'm lending my reputation and my support to them, whatever it's worth. Okay. Um, lead. Tony, if you could tell us, lead. where did you get the motivation to uh, start this initiative? Um, and how far have you come? Seven months, correct? Yeah, seven okay. months. It's actually quite interesting. Um, <clears throat> my background is media, mm -hmm. so media specialist. And I worked with this organization called Media Focus on Africa. Right. And, and courtesy of Citizen, actually. Otino live shows on the road yes. and did uh, other television shows, again, on other TV channels, mm -hmm. sadly. But uh, I think what, what was successful about that was we got to reach very many people on very many different classes, social and economic uh, backgrounds, yes. and ethnic groups and such and such. Um, but what happened was, um, as the violence flared up in January, uh, mm -hmm. there's a very large percentage of middle class young people who didn't know exactly what to do or how to do it. Right. And so there was no entry point. For, for any form of participation, whether it is a positive one where we can air our views or uh, a humanitarian one where you can be able to lend support to those who have been 
hurt. And it became very personal to me because in January, Jerome Monduto has been a friend of mine for many, many years mm -hmm. and happens to be of the Luo tribe, uh, lost his mother and, and oh. she got killed outside her house in South B and it was a really big story. Mm -hmm. And Jerome and I started this initiative and his mom put in a lot of time and his mom put in a lot of counsel and advice. And so when, when he lost her, I lost her as well. Right. You know, and yeah. lots of people miss that. Lots mm -hmm. of people miss that. Emotions and, and affections cut between the, the barrier of, of ethnic group, cut between the barrier of social economic class and, and whatnot. Right. And um, Jerome and I have very different backgrounds. We talk different languages. But then when it comes down to it, we, we have the same, same personality. We have the same character. We have the same values. Mm -hmm. And LEAD, was, which stands for Leadership Exploration for African Development, mm -hmm. is really looking for an alternative to governance type leadership through which young people can get involved in the decision making process. So that's why it's called Leadership Exploration. We're right. exploring for other opportunities for leadership. And that's okay. what it's about. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, John, if you could tell us what Zimba's um, goal uh, and intentions are to create um, a in which the youth can be heard and their voice can be heard. How do you intend on doing this as a foundation? Or how have you done this so far? I think, again, it's a good question, but the, the, the sincere answer is that we're in the process of doing something. Okay. Uh, in the idea that these folk are going to go off and network with other young people in other African countries. Right. This is not their sort of... Uh, mission statement, they'll spend all their lives, but it's a start. I think uh, a lot of the naysayers have said, why are these young people going off to Uganda, and Tanzania, mm -hmm. Zambia, mm -hmm. when all our troubles are here? Why right. don't they focus? And uh, that focus, sometimes, you know, I, I don't know, it's a biblical statement, sometimes the prophet has to leave his own village to be heard. Yeah. Right. And I think it's true to say that here in Kenya, we've given our young people a bit of a rumble. We don't listen to them. They don't exist. Right. Uh, and yet we still keep on giving the statistic. Make up 60, 70 percent of our population under the age of right. 18. Exactly. So obviously the needs of those people and at the other end of the spectrum, the, uh, the needs of older people, because mm -hmm. our society is also through wonderful medicine living longer, right. is a social problem. Mm -hmm. And as I said earlier, I think my time with these young people is that they're actually doing something. Mm -hmm. We can actually spend a lot of time criticizing them right. about they're going on a trip, they, but they've, they've got it together. They've got sponsorship. It obviously takes a, a certain amount of money to go from here to, to South, South Africa and back. back yeah. uh, they have a, a budget that perhaps Tony would like to talk about, if you know, maybe. Right, yeah. But money has been poured into the project. Mm -hmm. uh, as he mentioned, at some point in the deal, the word middle class came through. In other words, these are young people who, by definition, are well-educated, right. articulate, as mm -hmm. you can hear. Mm -hmm. And it's, there's something, sometimes something to be said about they don't stand for it because they've had life all their own yeah. way. Oh, my yeah. gosh, right, they're right. articulate. Right. But by the very nature of things, they will have to represent the leadership of the future. Of I would much rather put on my TV set and watch young Tony speak right. than perhaps somebody who hasn't had the opportunities that he's had. Right. So this is an ongoing debate about the nature of privilege mm -hmm. and what a privileged person has to do in society. Okay. You know, I would posit that I myself have been privileged in very many ways, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to think that maybe throughout my life I've used those privileges to give something back. Right. So it's not, a, it's, not a, it's not entirely a sort of ego trip mm -hmm. right. scenario. These, these young people are not ego tripping. Right. And I think that if they can generate a certain degree of publicity to mm -hmm. themselves, mm -hmm. then they won't need a patron. Right. Because I'm trying to suggest that, you know, a week from now, if, if, if Tony and Jerome had come to your studios mm -hmm. and says, we want to change the world, right. you'd say, well, you know, disappear. We've got no time for you. Right, right. But by the time their trip is over, with the focus and all the initiatives and the media and the publicity that's going to surround their trip, mm -hmm. they'll come back and there'll be voices to be heard. Right. So they're, they're creating a platform. And I, I was saying to them that I don't think, I hope that in the process, they don't become politicians as well. Right, exactly. <laughs> I then sort of have a great leadership vacuum, then there'll be the great Lord Tony sitting right, on his throne. Right, right. <laughs> and we have to sort of go and pray to him before. <laughs> I hope that won't happen, right. but it's a risk that we're prepared to take. Okay.